Welcome to the OMZL Healing Sanctuary. We're here giving you bite-sized information, that way you can use it in your daily life. So I have a great member of the tribe with us today and he has so many things to share with you and I thought it was very important. So here we are. Please introduce yourself, brother. How you doing, everybody? My name is Sebastian Alipat, um, a great friend of Omar and a big believer in what he's doing here and I'm excited to be here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. So I met Sebastian at a, um, a Sacred Sons uh, men's gathering, and that was wonderful. And then the journey has just been going on and on. But I find him to be interesting because he has so many things to offer, like in the realm of like business and success and pushing forward. And, and, and he's so humble, like even if you ask him, he would probably go, who are you talking about? There's somebody else, right? <laughs> But yeah, maybe you can tell us a little bit about like where you've come from and leading up to here where we're at now. Sure, sure. Well, thank you again for the opportunity. Um, so I'm a firstborn Indian son. I was born in India. My parents moved to Africa and we moved to Queens in like the mid 80s. And, you know, growing up the son of Indian parents, you're supposed to be the doctor, you know, it's preordained in a way sometimes. Right. And I'm, I believed in that for a long time until it didn't serve me, right? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you kind of do what society, your parents or other people want to do until you kind of figure out what you want to do. And uh, uh, art had always been a love of mine my whole life. You know, I painted and drew. I grew up in Queens, loving the Mets, Spider-Man, you know, Batman, and I would just draw. And I was that kid drawing in the corner all the time. And I would just be like, that got me into art. It was almost like a foray into that larger world. I appreciated art history. And I always just thought, you know, I'll just do it for fun on the side. Mm -hmm. And I get to college and I kind of had the pre-med track, you know, going down that. But I just had an epiphany. You know, sometimes life gives you these moments where you might think beyond and it might be like a, a moment of clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. And I had this moment, such a moment, and just said, you know, I want to be a doctor, but do I want to like commit to that 10 year journey from where I was, have someone's life in my hand and not love it, not like really be impassioned? And the answer was no. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, this is a big reckoning right now. What do I do? I've been going on this this path for so long, I'm now seeing an exit sign, and I took it. <laughs> and I came back and I told my parents, and you know they weren't really happy about that. You know they were just maybe more like like scared, what out of genuine concern and wor and like worry. But I told them I want to do art. I want to do fine art. Mm -hmm. So I go from pre med to fine art. <laughs> so you can imagine how that went. <laughs> and you know I I switched over and I instantly felt like a load get lighter, right? Mm -hmm. I felt like I was kind of doing what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to traditional art school, but sometimes, you know, you don't have to do what you're supposed to do to get where you want to go. Um, I ended up doing uh, a degree in computer science, which was like the other Indian failsafe, <laughs> you know, but like I'm a visual guy, you know, I'm the front end. I like the front end, even mm -hmm. though I could code. It didn't also really didn't move me. I just was like, uh, I'll do this just in case. Like kind of what you did in high school. It looks good for college, right? Oh, this looks good for getting a job. Right. Um, I came out of you know college with, with these degrees and I instantly got a job as a designer at a clothing company, Tommy Hilfiger. And I worked there and I was like cutting my teeth into like corporate, right? First job, you know, making money. And it was great because it was learning design you know and then i started to just like you know when you work for corporate you got to use corporate fonts you got to use the same images over it gets a little like trite after a while mm -hmm. but i learned i started doing kind of my own freelance work on the side hey i want to do logos for people as an aspiring designer i just wanted to get better and learning the programs all self-taught because i didn't go to a traditional art school so it is yes there is time that you put in when no one's looking you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you got to put in that time you know mm -hmm. you got to mm -hmm earn what you want to do in a way right and just putting in the bare minimum doesn't get you there you know malcolm gladwell says ten thousand hours of anything and you could be a master right right, right. and i certainly was not at that two thousand hours I was like, but i was just doing it for fun you know right, right. putting things on the side and as my career started to grow i started to help small businesses 
make a logo. Hey, you want a logo for your company? I'll do it. You know, charge 50 bucks, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, I'm making money right, doing design. Right. And you know, that further is an impetus to go keep, keep doing it. Because mm. you're like, hey, I actually like doing logos. It's mm. a little bit of illustration, a little bit of design, mm -hmm. a little bit of psychology, a little bit of branding. And mm. it was like, let me help someone kind of grow their business and start. Mm. But I was still an office guy and I was going in mm. And I went to another company, I was an art director there, got a little bit more experience using like these programs. Mm. You know, I'm dating myself, but when, when I started graphic design, it was like Photoshop 2. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. up to like Photoshop 26 now, right, you right, know? Right, so, right. so I've seen every version come out, right. and, 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 but each time it's like new tools and things like that. Right. And again, it's like honing that skill. You go back in, I was like, oh, there's a better way to do that now. Mm. And I started to get more savvy with the programs until the point where I was like, yo, I'm like operating on like some Jedi, mm -hmm. Jedi levels of these programs. I've been using them for almost like 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, I saw an exit, a potential exit out of that industry and I went mm -hmm. back to school actually. You know, I went back to school and totally changed everything. You know, sometimes in life also, unplucking yourself from everything you know can change your perspective. Mm -hmm. I left New York, so I'm originally, like I said, from Queens. I grew up in Queens and I left New York and moved to California. Mm. And it was like the start of a whole different chapter of my life, mm. right? I went back to an advertising school and San Francisco was the city I lived in. And it was like everything different from New York and everything. I'd always heard about the, the left coast because I think traveling is the great seasoning for all people. Like seeing another culture, seeing another city, seeing another, being in your own place and being on your own mm. also gives you so much fortitude to like figure it out yourself mm. like you know you don't have the safety nets of like mom dad your friends you're just and i was on my own mm. and i think i learned the most in those times you mm. know because it was just like where do i you know i gotta find my own, own apartment just all those like kind of building blocks that you sometimes kind of do in college mm -hmm. but your parents are there to help you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this was like no i'm on my own devices mm -hmm. nearly 10 years after college i'm like Mm. moving to a new city starting over mm -hmm. and then you find and you settle right mm. you settle after that program i Continued my travels and the program allowed me to study in different cities around mm. the world. Mm. So mm. I left San Francisco for Berlin mm. Mm. and that was like, mm. start over again, mm -hmm. totally different language, mm -hmm. totally different world, totally, wow. you know, and mm -hmm. again, made some, made friends, figured it out. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. you know, by the time you kind of leave, uh, I feel like litmus test of life, three months of anything mm. either tells you you want to do it you can do it or you're kind of in a rhythm, right? Great, so after those advice. three months are over, I traveled around Europe a little bit and the next month of the next trimester of the school was Brazil. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Sao Paulo, Brazil mm -hmm. and I lived there and I worked in an advertising agency there. So I had this like incredible upbringing with my parents mm -hmm. of just traveling around the world mm -hmm. and that stuck with me forever. Mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. my, in my opinion, like, you know, I'm not about collecting stuff, mm -hmm. rather collect experiences. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like Amen. knowing those places, going to those places, being in those times. And I was, you know, on my own, but I was growing so much as a person. Mm -hmm. And this allowed really the universe to give me these two years, mm -hmm. whereas two years before I thought I was going to kind of either mm -hmm. go get engaged to the girl that I'm now married to now. Mm -hmm. But we had this time apart, which proved to be so valuable for mm -hmm. her and for me. Mm -hmm. And then we came back together and, you know, we, we ended up getting engaged. I came back to New York, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes there is a thing I was like so fixated on, I'm done with New York. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. California dreaming the whole yeah. thing. I'm going to bring her out there. <laughs> and, you know, life steps in and sometimes we'll show you why mm -hmm. maybe we can't see for the forest, the forest from the trees when it happens, right. but why you're meant to be here. Mm -hmm. um, and so we ended up, I ended up moving back to New York and I, again, went back to this advertising design career. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it's like 12 years mm -hmm. of me doing it. And I got offered a position as a creative director. Mm -hmm. So in the graphic design world, that's the glass ceiling, right? right. You're a creative right. director. You right. got people underneath you. You got the title, it checks mm -hmm. off all the boxes, mm -hmm. you know, nice office, perks. Mm -hmm. But I sat with myself and I was like, something's missing, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Concurrently at the time, I was practicing a lot of yoga. You mm -hmm. know, I was practicing mm -hmm. a lot of yoga. Mm -hmm. My body was like kind of almost starting to unwire. Mm -hmm. All this it's, negative patterning and yoga. belief mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you had to do. All the... I should keep doing that because that's what you're supposed to do. I should be in an office because 
getting paid twice a month <coughs> right. is what you're supposed to do. You're right. supposed to live that kind of life That's and right. be a, and then retire. Then. Exactly right. <laughs> and uh, I, I started to like think about like, what do I what do I want to do? And like the as as it turned out, the company was like moving to Manila, Philippines. Mm. Mm. I was like, my, I just got married to my wife, and I was like, my life is not going to M Manila. We're just, that's not where my life is headed. Sometimes life will point you the ways, other times it's your own instinct, mm -hmm. like listening to your heart. Okay. Um, didn't, so, you know, that company went that way, and I just freelanced for a year. Mm -hmm. At this point, I had 12 years, 13 years of being a designer. Mm -hmm. I could freelance for a year, get some clients on my own, mm -hmm. trying to figure out what's next. Mm -hmm. And, you know, during this great unwiring of like a lot of yoga, I was coming out of Shavasana one day, you know, in a in our apartment in the backyard. My we had a garden floor apartment on the Upper West Side, mm -hmm. and my wife would teach yoga to our community out mm -hmm. there. You know, backyard yoga we called it. Mm -hmm. And I just looked around. I was like, I'm just gonna have a show here. You know, like I'm gonna commit to being an artist. You know, and this was like early on. And I said, end of thir 2013 all of 2014, right around this time, like early year, I said, I'm gonna draw every single day for a year. Mm -hmm. I wanna commit to a practice. Because again, you can't just jump into being an artist without like exercising that muscle. And mm -hmm. I hadn't exercised it, but I was longing for it. Mm -hmm. It was like this mm -hmm. nagging feeling like something's telling me, pick up a paintbrush mm -hmm. or pick up a pencil and draw again. Mm -hmm. So for no one else but myself, I created a Tumblr called Sketch 365, and I would just draw every day, day one, day mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. on the way to work, things like that. And then, like when the work, when the corporate life ended, mm -hmm. again, I decided, you know, I'm going to culminate with this. Like, I'm done being a designer. Mm -hmm. So here I'm telling my parents now, I'm done being a designer, and mm -hmm. I'm going to art, which was again what I, what I circled back all those years ago. That's right. what, what my right. instinct was telling me. Mm -hmm. So I came out of yoga one day and I said, like, I'm going to have an art show here. Mm. I'm gonna. Mm. This is my coming out party. Hey everyone, right. I'm going for it. And I mm. hung up art everywhere in the apartment. Mm. Created po programs, labeled it, curated like it was my own gallery. It really right. was inside, right. outside. Right. Put it out to our community and just said, you know, universe, this is what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I put it out that weekend. It was again uh, our garden floor outside apartment. I just prayed for no rain, right. uh, you know. <laughs> and and people came and. I sold 60% of the work that week. Wow. And this was like work wow. that it was under my, like my bed in my parents' <laughs> house in Queens, things that were just sitting around for years. And right. I was like, like all like the Voltron lines. I'm like, come right. together, right. guys. Right. It's all time. And it was the collected wow. work. Wow. And it was a mind blowing weekend. Like, right. what right. is possible? That right. eureka moment goes mm. off in your head. You know, at this point, I'm out of an office. I'm just like, right. I just made all this money right. selling my own art. Right. It is possible, you right. know, okay. like there's nothing okay. but money in art, right? Right. right? And I was such on a high, but that's a weekend. Mm. Monday, it's not like all the galleries in New York are like, Mr. Alipad, right. we heard you're an artist now. Right. We'll buy everything. Right, right, you know? right, no, right. art is a hustle. You right. know, as people right. and my artist friends out there know, art is a hustle and you've got to keep going for it. Right. You know, so I was like, but I was in it. Mm. I was the rolling up my right, sleeves, right. painting all night, okay. like new paintings. But you were, were out of the, the day job at that point. I was out of the day job. Right, I was right. doing freelance work, mm -hmm. but I was like, yo, this Yeah, because they amazing. moved to Manila, right? Yeah, they moved right. to Manila. So I have like this team, time to like, hey, I'm going to work on that website, but it's my own hours on right. my own time. And I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Now, my wife at the time, she's crushing it as an entrepreneur. I, I don't know anything about the entrepreneur world. Mm -hmm. I've just always been an office guy. But here I am now trying to figure out where is that next paycheck, as right. we can all relate to, right? <laughs> and I'm trying to sell paintings. I'm just like, I'm getting some commissions here and there. But mm -hmm. like, I don't sell this painting. The right. rent's not getting paid, right? <laughs> right? There's a pressure with that. And didn't have kids at the time. Mm -hmm. But my right. wife was amazingly supportive. Her name's Amanda. And Amanda was amazingly supportive and like really uh, said, you know, I got you, you know, and like, Go, follow Beautiful. your dreams. Wow. Which is amazing. so rare. She is amazing, you know? Amanda. And yes. she incubated me in that time to like figure out what was next. Mm. And you know, things happen for a reason. I always I always believe that. I went out to uh, lunch with her and one of her friends, and her friends just said, Yo, you live on the upper west side of Manhattan, which largely is kids and dogs. Mm -hmm. Right, right, She's right. Like, right. Nice you, dogs. Why don't you just teach art to kids? Mm, mm. And you know, when someone says something like that, you, your brain runs through the nose. Like, right. I can't. Uh, right. I don't want to go back to school. Yeah, or I don't want the degree. Kids, and this, no way. And it just I not, never entertained it. And you know, <clears> I sat with it for a few days, gave some pause, gave some reflection. 
I just said, you know what? Okay, maybe I'll just be like an art tutor. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. so many kids on the Upper West Side. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I, and you know, I took an entrepreneurship course offered by the New York City because mm-hmm. I think sometimes you got to put some skin in the game if you're really going to commit to things. Right. Uh, it's called Fast Track, and it's still around. And I came out with, you know, the end of that course. Now, the branding and the logo, mm. I got that, right? Mm. Like, that's right. what I know I how to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. So I came up with this uh, name for the company called Spark. Mm. And the idea being like, when I grew up, I remember every art teacher that I always, always had. Right, You know, that was, the sh- that was the period that I was mm-hmm. like... I showed up, like, mm-hmm. what are we doing right. today? You know, know. that, you yeah, know, yeah. like math and science, yeah, those are yeah. out of the way, everything's yeah. done. Like, Gym. what are we doing? Yeah, what are we doing for yeah, art? art? And mm-hmm. I lit up for that, right? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to create a program where me as a little kid would go, I'm like, that is such a fun program. I want to do that. So mm-hmm. I created this program where I really wanted to cultivate, foster, and educate them, right. but really make kids feel seen mm-hmm. and heard, right? Mm-hmm. So here I am, this. Indian guy with tattoos on the Upper West Side yeah. teaching kids yeah, now yeah, this yeah. With, program. With long hair, you had long hair. Yeah, had long hair, <laughs> and I'm just like teaching in an unconventional, out of the box way. Mm. And I said, I'm not going to do any kind of ads, or I want it to be organic growth mm. and have one mom tell another mom. Right. And I'm so blessed because I had so many great families kind of support mm. this idea. Right. It started in my apartment. Right. One kid on one table, wow. you know, and now we're eight years later, you know, thousands of kids that we've helped. And it started with me just saying, I'm going to introduce yoga because yoga had changed my life. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to introduce meditation. Mm-hmm. And then I had these three creative, if, if you will, disciplines, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. art, yoga, and meditation mm-hmm. that I was sharing with children. And along the way, I just said, man, I have a gift for this. And like, I actually love doing it. And it has given me an avenue to like create positive change in their lives, bring under amazing teaching artists onto my company and like have like a staff where like I have amazing teachers that also support the growth. And it is allowed to spark to literally spread into places I've never stepped foot in. You know, right, like right. I shepherd the, the arrangements and the logistics, mm-hmm. but the teachers go in there and teach in their own style. Mm-hmm. I want to support their own teaching artist voice, if you will. Mm-hmm. And I said, we're not art teachers, we're teaching artists. All the artists that I brought have that. their own individual practices, mm-hmm. you know, different backgrounds, different mediums, mm-hmm. and that's what makes them special. Right. And you know, like I created birthday parties mm-hmm. and museum field trips mm-hmm. and, and tried to really create fun camps and all these things. And now the business has really, I invested the money into the business and it's grown <coughs> through parent support. So tell me, how long has have the company been active? So February 9th, 2015, we started. 15. Like one kid and... So that's like seven years you've been at it, right? Yeah. So it's called Spark. It's called Spark. Right, yeah. and Spark would... You had the idea of it being sparking something, correct? Exactly. I mean, but, but it's the, also an acronym too. Yeah. So when I started it, because I was like all businessy, <clears throat> specialized private art resources for kids. Mm. You know, and my initials are SPA. So I wanted to kind of sneak my initials in there too. <laughs> but the idea of being like the word spark for a company is not completely original. Right. But the right. idea is that. We're not saying all your kids have to be artists. Mm-hmm. You know, that's mm-hmm. not, it is. But at that kindergarten through fifth grade, mm-hmm. art is such a great avenue for children right. to just express themselves, mm-hmm. to let out emotions, mm-hmm. to share things, mm-hmm. to put their passions down into things. Okay. And it's such a great v- venue for them to feel like, again, accepted and seen. Right. And just It's also fun, right? We just want them to have fun. It, it is. So, so it's been about seven years, right? And how many schools are you in now? So again, it started with like one kid on one table. I wasn't even thinking about school, but like big believer again, when you're on the right path, Mm -hmm. doors just start to open up. Mm -hmm. And one after school led to another, led to another. And now we're in about 
25 schools. 25 schools. You have the program of Spark there? Yeah. That's amazing, bro. Yeah, thank you, man. That's amazing. And I know I've seen you on television. I've seen you on, on, on a major network like two times already or something like that. It's incredible yeah. how, how they levitated toward like, hey, look what this guy's doing over here. And, and, and they, they looked into your program. Super special, right? And that also happened on its own without any solicitation. Mm. Pix11 News covered us uh, in 2018. And then I ran into the producer post-COVID, and she was like, oh, how are you doing? How, like, are you guys okay? I'm like, well, more than okay. We did great because, you know, COVID, while it was so challenging for so much of the world, was really a great time for us because we were able to give kids an outlet. Mm -hmm. And online, which is not great for everything, actually works great for art because kids felt like they were getting a semi-private lesson at home, you know, and I could reach kids from anywhere. It's the arm of the business I never thought I'd had to build. I mean, no one knew COVID was going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. And well. it built itself into the business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so now it's there. So if a ch if parent ever wants a private and the mm -hmm. kid is long distance, mm -hmm. I do some privates now with some of my students from New York because mm -hmm. I've moved to Pennsylvania now. Mm -hmm. And it allows me to stay in touch with them. So I'm grateful for that. You know, and it was it allowed me to navigate that tricky time in the world. How about the something that you've learned about a student that they've told you about, or something like that, which is like one of the like most, you know, like, you know, without naming names and stuff like that. But you know, something that you you, you saw it and you were like, what? Wow! <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, here's the thing: the conventional teaching model is. Teachers up here, students down here, teacher, it's one directional, right? It's unilateral. I teach in a different way, right? I, 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 this is a different way of teaching because I believe it's cyclical. It goes both ways, right? Mm -hmm. I am sharing knowledge with them, mm -hmm. and I get so much from my students too, you know? Mm -hmm. So there are, there are times where during COVID, you know, everyone was on Zoom, and all the teachers were like, please keep your volume off. Mm -hmm. Whereas our classes were like, you know, I want to hear from you. Mm. What's going on in your world? Like, hey, let me relate to them. Hey, this is kind of a scary time right now. I know everything is kind of strange. You're not seeing your friends. Think about their social fabric just being torn in half. You're in a kid. They said, oh, it's going to be two weeks or more like two years where you're just going to have to adjust to this new way of life. And it's not the same. Kids fell through the cracks. But we tried to create a even children's circle environment digitally, virtually, mm -hmm. where it's like, hey, does anyone, anyone want to share? Mm -hmm. And the shares would be powerful stuff. Like, I miss my friends. Um, mm -hmm. Coming up with the ideas of how, hey, what if you just sent like a postcard? And when you get that postcard, you send it to the next person, and you send it to the next person. And we just kind of tag each other with the old fashioned ways, right? The old ways, like right. an actual piece of art or letter that somebody gets in the mail. Right. It's not an email, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we're using this virtual forum, but the old ways still work. Mm -hmm. And just getting something like that could make such a big difference in someone's day. You know, right, so right. I got a lot from them both ways. And mm -hmm. I always say it's reciprocal, right? Like mm -hmm. it goes, I get from them and I give to them, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. That's great, that's amazing, bro. I love what you're doing. Thank you for coming through. You just popped in for an ice plunge and we did the breath work and we got out there. We got into the water. That was amazing. Oh We're just still buzzing. And I said, I got to get him down on video, man. So here he is, Sebastian. He's a huge part of what we do here, man. So thank, thank you, so you again, brother. Oh, my thank pleasure. you. I appreciate pleasure. you. Blessings, brother. Thank you. Take care, everyone.